This video is not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends or VPN. Hello my siblings in Christ, you know the drill. I answer the questions posted in previous Q&As. If you want to have your question answered, please post it in the most recent Q&A episode. Also, know that I have a lot of questions to answer, so while I will answer your question, it does not mean it will be answered in the next episode. Let us begin. Nicholas Emsing asks, You mentioned secret prayers being a bad idea. In the Orthodox Church, are there no secret prayers in the liturgy or do the faithful hear every word? In the Orthodox Church, a lot of prayers by the priests during the liturgy and in services are read silently. However, this is a newer practice. The idea was that the faithful should hear the priest and respond Amen to his prayers. Without getting into the development of that newer practice, it is slowly being replaced by prayers read out loud, because, at least in Orthodoxy, reading of those prayers silently has directly led to the practice of infrequent communion. In Serbia, when the loud prayers became a bit more prominent, a lot of Christians were surprised that quite a large number of prayers read during the liturgy simply assumed that everyone will take communion. Ballad Bill 110 asks, What are your opinions on megachurches? Have you ever been in one? I hate them. I'm not a fan of them. In ages past, people used to build huge churches and cathedrals in the glory of God, and you cannot escape God in such buildings. In a megachurch, due to underlying iconoclasm, there are very few, if any, things that actually testify about God outside of a service. A megachurch can be turned into a concert hall in a matter of hours. Finally, I have never been into a megachurch. Thomas Kausar asks, Should Russia reinstate the Tsardom? I thought they have already. Okay, I jest. But what they have now is not really all that different from Tsardom, except for the lack of hereditary title and the genetic diseases. I'm no fan of monarchy, but it might be the right thing for the Russian temperament. While I do think that democracy is the least bad form of government, I'm not sure if democracy is for everyone. Greek word Greek word asks, if you could only say or listen five hymns or sentences from the Holy Bible or Psalms in your whole life, what would they be? Well, in no particular order, I really like the parable of the talents, I could listen to that one forever. The second is something I should keep in mind at all times because I have this channel. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that breathes the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to the others, I myself should be a castaway. The third one is the essence of the gospel. What Christ says to the risen saints. I surely I say to you, Inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. The force speaks for itself. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God has sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. Finally, I really like this verse. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Andre Gobriel asks, Why do Eastern Orthodox congregants keep asserting that cops are heretics? Because they don't accept the Fourth Ecumenical Council of Chalcedon, Chalcedon, Chalchicho, Georgion, which defined that Christ is one person, fully God and fully human, without the natures of his godhood and humanity mixing or blending. Kakion Sama asks, why is Book of Enoch an apocrypha? While parts of the Book of Enoch were considered to be true prophecies of Enoch, the book on the whole was not considered as inspired. A handful of early fathers thought it was inspired, but this was rejected by the wider church. I do not know the specific reasons, but I assume it has to do with the name. While it contains some true prophecies of Enoch, majority are not. Robert Wakespeck asks, is Slavonic understood by Serbs like Latin is understood by some speakers of Romance languages? I think so. A typical Serb will get bits and pieces from Church Slavonic. We would understand the general theme of what's being sung or read, and quite a number of common words. However, if you ask the Serb to actually translate what he or she heard, you'd essentially get gibberish. Keskron asks, Are there any Serbian saints that aren't well known in the overall Orthodox world that you think more people should know about? I really like St. Simeon of Daibabe, an ascetic who lived in a cave where he painted icons. 
he's covered the whole cave with frescoes. Also, I really like Saint Stanko, the martyr of Ostrog. He was a Serbian child shepherd whom Turks tried to convert to Islam. He was so horrified at the prospect that he kept making the sign of the cross. When he refused to stop doing it, Turks killed him and burned his body. Only his two incorrupt hands remained and they were kept in a small church next to Ostrog Monastery. Gabriel Ungakta asks, Can you also say which churches claim are Christians but are not in your opinion? Without going through the list of all the denominations of the world, since there are too many of them, I would say that the only well-known group that claims is Christian but is not in actuality are the Mormons, as they believe in existence of other gods. Mother Meme asks, Do you believe Orthodox Christians should abstain from anything related to Western Christianity, like praying the rosary, even without the filioque and the mysteries, lace mantillas, youth prayer groups, modern Christian music, and so on? I think that the majority of these things, as you described, are fine, except the lace. Of course, some discernment is in order, and especially when it comes to prayer. It should be discussed with your priest. Saint Seraphim of Sarov taught a version of the rosary. I'll put the link in the description. Thank you for listening another Q&A episode. Remember, post your questions in the most recent episode. The best way to get on my bad side is to say, you haven't answered my question. I will get to it. It just takes time. Bye!